Hello everyone and welcome to the Malta National Aquarium. We are here to tell you a story about sharks. This is Hatchlings. This is the story of two sharks that we can find in Maltese waters. The nurse hound shark and the small spotted cat shark. Sharks have been fished and eaten for many, many years. Together with the Multinational Aquarium, Shark Club Malta and the collaboration with the fishermen, we try to save sharks. Let's find out more. We are here with Sophie Pops. She's a marine biology student and Shark Club intern. She's gonna tell us what Shark Club does. When and how was this project conceived? Well, Shark Club was first set up in 2008 and we've started going to the fish market in 2009 where we learned and we saw all of the sharks and the last ranks at the fish market and we discovered that for the amount coming in quite a few of them had eggs. Do all sharks lay eggs? Not all sharks lay eggs. Some sharks like such as these ones do lay eggs whereas some give birth to live young and some have eggs that hatch inside of them and then the babies come out as live young. So they are very different species and three very different reproduction ways. At the fish market, you may encounter different sharks, labelled with the same name. Mazzola. Mazzola is used to describe at least seven different sharks. You might be unaware of the shark that you are buying and eventually eating. What are the main obstacles you face? Actually, maintaining a relationship with the fish market, so making sure we stay within the boundaries and don't do anything to cause the fishermen lose their money and profit from the fish market. And then when we collect the eggs, we have to try and get them out without harming them, which can sometimes be challenging if they're stuck right in there. But yes. we'll make it work. The Malta National Aquarium is the facility where the baby sharks are taken care of. And today we are here with Daniel De Castro, who is the manager and curator of the aquarium. Okay, so as soon as the eggs arrive to the aquarium, we have to acclimate them to our own water conditions. Normally they are similar to what uh, their eggs they come from the sea, basically, but uh, there is a slight difference normally in temperature and salinity. So there's always a, a bit of acclimating uh, process to do 
Also, sometimes when they take them from the egg, from the dead females in the market, they come straight from the market. Uh, that means uh, the eggs are suffering a bit of a temperature shock, uh, and that means we have to acclimate them fast, but at the same time, slow enough so that the animal can, uh, well, the embryo in this case, um, can adapt. So if the, if the eggs are fertilized, that's the moment when we can say, okay, well, we can have a shark. Otherwise, we have to discard them. Normally, we can see that because uh, fungus will start growing in the outside cover of the egg, and we have to discard the eggs uh, in that way. Also, um, once the fungus starts growing, we have to be careful with the adjacent eggs because even though they might be fertilized, they might get uh, contaminated by the same fungus. So after that, um, we put them in a tank, we separate them well, and we allow water to flow all around the eggs. Um, this takes about four months, depending on temperature, but takes about four months for the eggs to fully develop into newly hatched uh, sharks. Once the sharks are hatched, uh, they feed first on artemia, which is a tiny crustacean, then on mysis, which is a little bit bigger, and then slowly, slowly we get them acclimated with a bit of uh, muscle and also shrimps. Um, then uh, eventually they come and start feeding on uh, squid, tentacles, and squid as well, and, uh, and small pieces of fish like uh, white bait. Hi Sophie! Hello! What's happening today? So today we're at Chikawa to release the sharks that have been in the aquarium the last year back into the wild again. How's the weather? The weather is interesting. It's good and ready to go. How are you feeling? I'm very excited. This is the first dive for you or you already um, dived before with the new sharks? This is the first time I've ever dived and released sharks myself so it should be very exciting. It's going to be amazing. Thank you very much. Bye. So the final part of our journey with these shark eggs is the releases and let's be honest the releases are the best bit. So basically what we do is we will scuba dive down to about 20 metres to release the baby sharks. Now, so they're babies, they're about a year old by this point normally. And what we'll do is we work with a dive school here called Mol Aqua, they'll supply our cylinders to us. We'll take them up north to a place called Chikawa, which is one of the most famous dive sites in Malta. We're going to take them off. The reason why we choose Chikawa is because in between Gozo and the north of Malta, it's nice and deep, so the sharks get a nice opportunity to swim off. Now, the reason why we release there specifically is because about 20 metres, there's a lot of sand and a lot of sea grass, which is not only good for our divers when we're releasing, in the sense that everyone can kneel down and see the sharks be released. Also, if the sharks do want to dart off out into the blue, then they have the opportunity to go and hide in the sea grass, which is incredibly important. What we do is we take them in big and um, plastic bins that have holes in. Now, the plastic bins allow the water to sort of flow through so they get a bit more used to the, sort of the sights and the smells and everything like that as they're swimming them out. And then once we get to the bottom, we can then invert the box, so it's on its lid, open the lid, and then voila, release the sharks. And sometimes they'll hang around, sometimes they'll swim into the blue, sometimes they'll even come and hide under your fins, which is why we need to be extra careful when we're releasing them. I was lucky enough 
last month to release three I pulled out when I was an intern, and it truly was magical. I really can't overstate it more than that. And baby little nurse hand sit on my thumb for about an hour, and I thought I was going to cry just for how beautiful it was. At the end of the day, this is why we do what we do. Small little things like this that remind us how important the ocean is to save, no matter what creature it is, from the most common to the most rare, from the biggest to the smallest. They're all important. Our story about baby sharks is about to end. Let's find out why sharks are important and why do we need to fight to protect them. Hi, my name is Thais, I'm the Education Officer at the Multination Aquarium. When it comes to sharks, they have a really horrible reputation in the movies, in the media and even in the news. The thing is, they are wild animals. We need to understand and respect their nature. It is their habitat, not ours. That being said, what the movies, as I said, are showing are not exactly true. We have different species of sharks, between four and five hundred different species of sharks in the whole world. Most of them wouldn't do anything if they saw you in the water. Certain species in certain conditions are the ones that can be involved in shark accidents. Animals like bull sharks, tiger sharks, oceanic white lips, gray whites, etc. What happens is Certain conditions they can provoke an attack. It can be that the visibility isn't really great because it is sunrise or sunset. They haven't eaten in a long time to erase something shiny. It really depends on the individual, the species, and the overall conditions. When we think about the numbers though, every single year, on average, in the whole world, between five to 10 people are killed by shark accidents. Not attacks, accidents. At the same time, how many sharks are being killed by humans every year? 100 million sharks. I'm talking reasons like shark feeding, bycatch, overfishing, loss of habitat, climate change, habitat loss, so many different things that can that humans are doing to sharks. And they are the ones who get the bad reputation, they are the ones who are being labeled as the bad ones, when in fact they are so important. Conservation projects like this one that the Aquarium and Shark Lab are doing together, they are putting back the population numbers up. So if you think about sharks, there's different reasons why they are important, let's put it this way. I'm just going to mention two of them. If you think about the food chain, so it's like a triangle sort of. At the bottom we have plants, at the top we have animals like sharks. If there's no sharks, certain populations of fish are going to go larger because there's no sharks to eat them, while the other ones underneath these guys are going to go smaller because there's too many of these guys. Everything goes out of balance. Not to mention that sharks tend to eat the weak and the sick. So without sharks, diseases spread, weak fish reproduce, and the oceans literally become unhealthy. Which is why, once again, conservation programs like this one are so, so important.